Okay, in this example, we're going to identify the vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes, if any, of the function g of x equals x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 divided by x squared plus 8x plus 15. So the first thing I'm going to notice is that we have we don't have any horizontal asymptotes, but we do have an oblique asymptote. And we know there's an oblique asymptote... We know there's an oblique asymptote because the degree of the numerator is exactly one larger than the degree of the denominator. So that tells us that we have an oblique asymptote. So we'll find that to get the vertical asymptotes, I'm going to look at, I'm going to start by factoring the, the, the denominator, figure out what makes that zero, if anything. Then I'm also going to factor the numerator, see if any of the values that make the denominator zero also make the numerator zero, because if that happens, then they're not vertical asymptotes. But let's start off here by factoring. So I'm going to factor the denominator first, because that one looks easier to me. So we've got a quadratic, uh, our x squared has a coefficient of 1, so we need two numbers that multiply to 15 but add up to 8. Well, 1 and 15, that doesn't work, but how about, how about 3 and 5? Okay, so the numerator, we're going to use factoring by grouping. So if I, if I look at my first two terms, x to the third and 3x squared, I could factor x squared away and be left over with x plus 3. If I look at the next, or the, I should say the last two terms, negative 4x minus 12, we could actually factor out a minus 4. And again, we'll be left with x plus 3 inside our parentheses. So recall that when doing factoring by grouping, what we do now is we take the, the, uh, the first factor in each term and put those in one set of parentheses. So x squared minus 4 will go in one set, and then we're left over with x plus 3. I'm going to jot down my denominator. Again, this factoring makes sense. You know, if you think about distributing, well, you distribute x squared to both terms, x and 3, and then we distribute negative 4 to both terms, x and positive 3. That's exactly what this says to do. Take x squared, distribute it to x plus 3. Then it also says take negative 4 and distribute it to x plus 3. All right, so to get the, um, so to get the vertical asymptotes, I'm going to take the denominator... Set that equal to 0. Notice that we'll get x equals negative 3 as a solution from our first factor, and x equals negative 5 as a solution from our second factor. But it's easy to see that if we put negative 3 into the numerator, we'll get 0 in the numerator. We'll also get 0 in the denominator. So that means x equals negative 3 is actually not a vertical asymptote. But if we put negative 5 into the numerator, we'll definitely get something not 0. Again, we do get 0 in, in the denominator, so that means x equals negative 5 is in, fact, is, in fact, a vertical asymptote. And again, another way that people often do these is just cancel out your common factors. And once you've canceled out all your common factors, whatever's left over in the denominator, set it equal to 0, solve, that'll give you your vertical asymptote or asymptotes. So x equals negative 5 is a vertical asymptote. Now to find the oblique asymptote, again we said this happens since the degree of the numerator is one larger than the degree of the denominator, so we have to do long division. Okay, um, You could do long division on this original expression, but it's much easier to do long division on this simplified expression. It'll save us, it'll save us a step. So that's actually one of the reasons why I found the, the, the vertical asymptote before actually even doing the oblique asymptote, because I knew if there was a common factor, some common factors, that'll help simplify the fraction, which will make the long division easier.
Okay, so notice we could have factored the numerator a little further, x squared minus 4. That's a difference of perfect squares. We could have factored that a little bit further and had x plus 2 and x minus 2. But again, even with those two factors, it's not going to cancel out with the x plus 5. So something I guess I should point out, something I was thinking about but, but didn't, didn't clearly say. Okay, so sorry, got cut off a little bit. So we're going to do our long division now. We're going to do our long division now to find the oblique asymptote. So x squared minus 4, that's being divided by x plus 5. So there's x plus 5. Again, I put thing, you want things to be in descending powers, descending, uh, descending exponents, which we have here. We've got x squared, 1x squared. Notice there's no term involving x, but I'm going to fill it in as a placeholder. So I'm going to have 0x and then minus 4. Since we're dividing by a linear term, you could also use synthetic division if you want. Um, I'm going to use long division simply because long division works even if you're not dividing by a, a, linear, a linear expression. So I think x multiplied by what is x squared? Well, I think just x. So x times x, now we, we distribute. So x times x is x squared. x times positive 5, well that's positive 5x. Then we do our subtraction. So 0x minus 5x will be negative 5x. You can drop down your negative 4. And now I think x multiplied by what is negative 5x? Well, just negative 5. So we'll get negative 5x when we distribute. Negative 5 and positive 5 is negative 25. Again, if we subtract, the negative 5x minus negative 5x will be 0x. We'll get negative 4 plus 25, which will give us 21. And that's going to be our remainder. So it says we can write x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 5. We can write that as x minus 5 plus our remainder of 21 over x plus 5. But to get the the oblique asymptote, or the slant asymptote, we just look at the, uh, we just basically leave the remainder off. So in this case, our oblique asymptote, the oblique asymptote will be the line y equals x minus 5.